Hello! So today I'm going to be sharing with you my top tips and hacks when it comes to motorcycle camping. Now I've been riding motorbikes for over a decade and I ride about 350 days a year so I've picked up a few good practical tips I want to share with you. So uh, here they are and all I ask in return is that you put a like on this video so it ranks higher in the YouTube search engine and we can spread these tips to other bikers. Thank you for watching. So my first tip is if you have a large spanner available, you can tuck it on your rear crash bung bolt, use it to raise the rear wheel of the bike and you'll be able to lube your chain easily. This is very helpful if you don't have a centre stand and it saves pulling out the paddock stand. If you've got an inflatable airbed when you're camping, you can take with you a bin bag and use it as your set of lungs. Simply fill it up with air, clip it onto the bed and squeeze the air into it. Saves a lot of energy. You've probably all heard of using a crushed soda can to use as a, an emergency side stand plate. But uh, a thing that I found that works a lot better and looks more, uh, more appealing to the eye is using an old tobacco tin or an old tin of mints. And it happens to have the edge around it so it stops your side stand sliding off. Next, always carry dental floss with you. You can use it as an emergency sewing kit to sew up split bags. In this case, I used fishing braid because I know it's a lot stronger. If you're unfortunate enough to be in a car park where you have to pay for a parking ticket, then you can use your old tax disc holder to display your ticket. In this case, I've modified it so I can padlock it to the front of my bike, and also don't forget to write your number plate on the ticket. It puts people off stealing it. If you want to give this a try, you can actually cook meat on the rear of your exhaust. Simply wrap it up in tinfoil, wrap it around the hot part of the exhaust, or you can put it on your downpipes and leave it for the approximate cooking time that it recommends on the packet. It genuinely works. If you're into a bit of recycling or you don't want to carry a stove with you, turn an old Coke can into a little makeshift wood powered stove. They're absolutely brilliant. If you're worried up about scuffing your shoes on the gear shift lever, then you should probably consider motorcycle boots. But in my case, I'm quite happy with a piece of duct tape over the front of my shoe. Protects it every time. It's always a good idea to carry gas with you, but uh, if you're looking to save money and do a bit of recycling again, always go to the recycling centre at the campsite where you can throw away your gas stoves and you're more than likely going to find a few full cans in there. Next, always carry spare key rings with you. These are incredibly helpful if the tag snaps off your zip. Then you can literally just thread it through where the broken tag is and use it for your tank bag, your coat and everything else you might need to use it for. If you want to save money on using the tumble dryer or you're out in the middle of nowhere where there's no electric, then a good way to dry your clothes is tying a piece of string between the tent and the motorbike. Makes an excellent clothes line. If you've spent a night in the rain when camping and the grass is completely wet in the morning, if you can't get any traction with your rear tyre, try putting bungee cords around your tyre. It will cause external grip which helps you to get off the field easier. It's a good idea to always carry some duct tape. I personally carry mine on a pen and it's also a good idea to carry Gorilla Tape. Gorilla Tape once held on my indicator in a 60 mile an hour collision and the duct tape also makes a good sun visor. A good cheap alternative to fog proof spray is to use Gillette shaving gel. Spray some on the inside of your visor, buff it off and that will create an anti-fog layer. It actually works. And you can check out the full video in the description. I always carry glasses wipes in my bag because they're great for wiping the visor from dead flies and they're good just after a long day of riding. And for everything else there's jungle wipes. Just a little bit better than wet wipes. I recommend carrying a head torch because if you need to use your hands for anything you've got both available. Better than using the torch on your phone. I recommend putting all your personal details in as many places as you can on yourself and the bike. If you do have an accident the emergency services know who you are quicker. Running a can of petrol additive through your engine before a big tour will blast out any carbon deposits and any little bits of water that might have built up inside. After this your bike will run much smoother. I recommend always carrying these little military style tin openers, but in the event that you do forget your tin opener, you can always use a piece of flat ground and scrape the tin on the ground to break the seal.
If you collect the fluff out of your tumble dryer filter, you can use it as a fire starter. It's a great little recycling tip for a completely waste product. And these things burn for a long time. Carrying Ziploc bags with you will allow you to waterproof anything that you're carrying that's valuable. Always a great thing to carry. You can now get very tiny GPS trackers that link with your phone. I personally keep one in my bike and set it to perimeter. If the bike leaves my perimeter, it will set an alarm off on my phone. If you're concerned about your zip splitting or your seam splitting on your side bags, you can always wrap a bungee cord around it just to ensure that it doesn't break. If it does split, it's going to hold it in place. In one of my older videos, you would have seen that I used a bin bag as a makeshift poncho to protect me from the rain. But nowadays, I carry these pocket waterproofs. These are absolutely brilliant and have a 5,000mm hydrostatic head. Perfectly waterproof. If you're using a disc lock on your bike, I recommend leaving an elastic band on your handlebar. It'll jog your memory in case you try to drive off with it on. Old and worn coats and even good coats can sometimes create areas where they collect puddles and then leak in through the zip. A good way to avoid this is take a strip of tape and just tape down that flap and that'll stop any water trying to penetrate through the zip and any little weak sections around it. Carrying a little electrical setup under your bike seat is a great idea. They run directly off the battery and you can use it to charge your phone, camera and any other device. And finally, after a long day's riding, you have a lot of crispy flies on your visor. Best way to take them off is put a wet cloth and leave it on for 10 minutes. After all the flies' bodies have re-moisturised, they'll wipe off easily. So, thanks for watching. I'll put some links in the description for uh, some more details on some of the tips I did mention. And uh, I'll leave a few other links for if you're interested in taking a look. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please share it and uh, get the information out there. Um, one more thing I'm going to share, and it's always good to uh, confuse a non-biker. Tell a non-biker that if you're going along at 10 miles an hour and you turn the steering to the left, the bike will go left. But if you do 30 miles an hour and turn the steering to the left, you will go right. It's to do with counter steering and uh, gravity and centrifugal force. So uh, it's always good to confuse someone. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.